How are you this morning? Good. We welcome you to our service this morning. I guess I'm speaking through two mics. Uh, we're glad that you're here. The weather scared you for a bit, did it? It's beautiful, beautiful sunny day. Did you know that? It's a beautiful sunny day? Understand this. If you get in a plane right now and go up above the clouds, what are you going to see? The sun. It's a sunny day. That's God's viewpoint. He always sees the sun shining. So we're glad to have you here this morning uh, as we worship God this morning. Uh, just a few announcements to remind you. Next Sunday, there will be the family breakfast uh, supported by the men's club. So please plan to be here for that at 9 a.m. It will be $5 a person. Or if you prefer, it would be for two people, $10 and one would be free. <laughs> if you want something free, that's what you can do. Uh, then also remember, next Sunday evening at 7 p.m., Cliff is going to give us a, a travel of Alaska and the Yukon. Bring your own beverage or own mug, travel mug, to get the full experience. So plan for that as well. Uh, on a sad note, uh, as we, you have known, Patrick Malosh passed away last week. His funeral is this afternoon at 1 p.m. at Families First on Dougal, on Lausanne. Sorry, Family First, Families First on Lausanne. Uh, Oh, but then I'm in bad shape then. I'm thinking Lausanne. So it is Dougal. Thank you for reminding me. I'd, I'd be at the wrong place, wouldn't I? Uh, but uh, yes, we at uh, Dougal, sorry. Uh, so that is this afternoon at 1 p.m. So please plan to support the family as best as we can. So you have come in snow, wondering why, maybe. But you have really come to worship. When we see snow, it reminds us of God and his mercy. Because he says, even though your sins may be as scarlet, I will wash them as white as snow. So when you see the snow falling, instead of complaining as we ought to do, just say thank you God for your mercy and your grace. And remember, the sun is always shining. Let us pray. Father, we have come this morning to worship you thanking you for your mercy and your grace. Thanking you for your love. Thanking you for your consistent care for us. Thank you that you show us in many ways that you care for us. And we pray that we will always appreciate that and celebrate that in many ways. So bless us as we worship you this morning, as we worship your Son, as we thank him for what he has done. And also, we pray what he taught the disciples to pray this morning. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So we have come to this quiet center. We have come to this place to worship our God. Let us stand as we sing our opening song, number 374. The words will be on the screen.
be seated. Children, please. Children, come on up, please. That's you, young man. You're, you're not a man yet. Come on, and you'll be there soon, though. You'll be there soon. Hi, Lily. What's your name, young man? Jackson. Jackson. Nice to meet you, Jackson. That's Lucas. Jackson. This is Lily. Oh, you go to the same school? Same class. Same class. Okay. Did you invite him? No? Okay, good. We're glad you're here. Glad you're here. So we're going to celebrate something today. When you have your birthday, do you celebrate your birthday? Why do you celebrate your birthday? Because we get older? No, no. People don't like to celebrate that. I'm sorry. No. Why do we celebrate our birthday? Because we were born. We would celebrate the fact we were born, and every year we remember that we were born. What else do we celebrate? Lily, what do you like to celebrate? Like to celebrate a nap? You like to celebrate your new shirt, your new boots? Okay, we celebrate all of those things. We love to celebrate because that makes us happy. That makes us feel good. So now, we are in a season of Lent, and we're going to celebrate something special in April. What are we going to celebrate? April. Easter. Easter, Jackson. That's right. Now, let me tell you the truth. Easter is not about the Easter bunny. Sorry. It's not about those lovely colored eggs. Eh, it's okay, I guess. You can kind of enjoy those. But it's really about what? What's Easter really about? What's it really about? Christ dying on the cross for our sins. And not only did he die, but he also resurrected, came back to life. And we can celebrate that for two reasons. We celebrate that because our sins are completely washed away if we accept him as our savior. And secondly, we celebrate that he was resurrected, which promises us that we will be able to live forever with Jesus if we live in him now. So we can celebrate that. So when your friends talk about Easter eggs and Easter bunny says, you know guys, that's all nice stuff. But Easter is really about Christ. And we celebrate that. Okay, so remember that as you continue to grow. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that we can celebrate Easter. We can celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus. And more ultimately, we can celebrate the fact that we can live forever with him. So please bless these young people that they will continue to grow and learn of you so that they can spend their eternity with you as well. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now before we go away, Mary Ann, please. We're going to celebrate Mary Ann because she has been giving her time for Sunday school. Uh, I don't know what's in it, but you're going to be celebrated nonetheless. Let's give her a hand, please. Thank you. There you are. Okay, she didn't ask for that, but we gave it to her. Okay, guys, follow her to Sunday school. So we also want to celebrate the fact that God has blessed us today. So we're going to hear a lot of celebrations today. God has blessed you with the ability to give back. God has blessed you with the ability to give back so that others could be blessed. So we celebrate that today. So we want to remind you, although we don't collect an offering from the front, you may bring your offerings and leave them in the baskets at the back of the pew. We celebrate that. We also celebrate a young lady whose fingers have tickled the ivories this morning. Glenna, we thank you very much for what you do for us here at the church. We want to celebrate the choir, even though they haven't been practicing every Thursday night, they show up every Sunday morning. Thank you. We celebrate you. There are three gentlemen back there, up top. We celebrate them. Without them, you'd just be seeing a blank screen, or maybe a blank look, or not hearing anything. So gentlemen, we celebrate you this morning as well. Thank you. Now, we're going to celebrate one more thing. The person to your left or to your right. Give them a big smile and celebrate that they're here with you. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Brad. Thank you. That, 
Please, that was not planned. <laughs> and I wasn't doing this, but thank you. That's very kind of you. Uh, it has been a blessing for me as well. So we're here to worship God. And one of the ways we will worship him is in music. Um, Glenna will be playing. But you know, some of the other songs you were playing earlier, I like those as well. But Give me Jesus. I expect to hear you. <laughs> okay. Well, I will, we'll do that. But do your special... Oh, earlier. Oh. I was humming. I was humming. Beneath the cross of Jesus was written by a frail Scottish Presbyterian woman who was born in 1830. Despite her physical frailties, she was known throughout her community for her helpful, cheerful nature. Elizabeth Cecilia Douglas Clafane was born in Edinburgh, Scotland, but was raised in the lovely Abbotsford area. She was one of three sisters, but she was known as the delicate, retiring member of the family. Within the limits of her strength, she served the poor and sick of the community, and she and her sisters gave to charity all they did not require for their daily needs. Miss Clefane was affectionately known in her community as the Sunbeam. Hmm. She enjoyed writing poems and had several published in the Family Treasury, a Scottish Presbyterian magazine. She passed away at the early age of 39. Hmm. Beneath the Cross of Jesus was written in 1838, one year before Miss Clefane's death. It was published anonymously in 1872 with several of her other poems. The original poem had five verses, but today only three are used in most hymnals. It is obvious that she was an ardent biblical student, for her hymn is full of biblical symbolism and imagery. Just in verse 1, we find the reference to the mighty rock, taken from Isaiah 32, verse 2. The weary land, taken from Psalm 63, verse 1. The reference to a home within the wilderness is taken from Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 2. A rest upon the way, taken from Isaiah 28, verse 12. The reference to the noontide heat is taken from Isaiah 4, verse 6. The reference to the burden of the day is taken from Matthew chapter 11, verse 30. Beneath the cross of Jesus is in Voices United, 135.
beneath the cross of Jesus, I fain would take my stand. The shadow of a mighty rock within a weary land. A home within the wilderness, a rest upon the way. From the burning of the noontide heat, and the burden of the day. Upon the cross of Jesus, Mine eyes at times can see The very dying form of one Who suffered there for me And from my smitten heart with tears To wonders I confess The wonder of His glorious love and my unworthiness. I take, O oh cross, your shadow, for my abiding place, I ask no other sunshine than the sunshine of his face. Content to let the world go by To know no gain, no loss My sinful self, my only shame My glory all the cross beneath the cross of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Glenn. Our scripture reading this morning will be given to us by El Voce, but you'll notice on the screen there will be some text in yellow. So when you see text in yellow, that is for you to share in the scripture reading this morning. Thank you, Pastor. This is Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good and his love is eternal. Let the people of Israel say, his love is eternal. Let the priests of God say, His love is eternal. That all who worship Him say, His love is eternal. In my distress I called to the Lord. He answered me and set me free. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? It is the Lord who helps me. 
and I will see my enemies defeated. It is better to trust in the Lord than to depend on people. It is better to trust in the Lord than to depend on human leaders. Many enemies were around me, but I destroyed them by the power of the Lord. They were around me on every side, but I destroyed them by the power of the Lord. They swarmed around me like bees, but they burned out as quickly as a brush fire. By the power of the Lord, I destroyed them. I was fiercely attacked and was being defeated, but the Lord helped me. The Lord makes me powerful and strong. He has saved me. Listen to the glad shouts of victory in the tents of God's people. The Lord's mighty power has done it. His power has brought us victory. His mighty power in battle. I will not die. Instead, I will live and proclaim what the Lord has done. He has punished me severely, but he has not let me die. Open to me the gates of the temple. I will go in and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Only the righteous can come in. I praise you, Lord, because you heard me, because you have given me victory. The stone, which the builders rejected as worthless, turned out to be the most important of all. This was done by the Lord. What a wonderful sight it is. This is the day of the Lord's victory. Let us be happy. Let us celebrate. Save us, Lord. Save us. Give us success, O Lord. May God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. From the temple of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God. He has been good to us. With branches in your hands, start the festival and march around the altar. You are my God, and I will give you thanks. I will proclaim your greatness. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good, and his love is eternal. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you for reading that, Brother Jim, and for the rest of you as well. So we are talking a little about celebration today. It is Lent, yes, but there's a lot that has been going on in our world. So really, what's there to celebrate? You know, when the pandemic first started, there were a lot of crazy things that happened. People were attacking other people over toilet paper. A person who was of an ethnic country, China, was beat up just because he was from China. It was believed China started all of this. Somehow it brought out the worst in humanity. There were many deaths that began, and even still today, many are dying due to coronavirus. When we first started, a few countries had it, uh, over 100 cases. Now the map is completely covered with those who have been affected, lost lives. And yes, there are some who have recovered. And in light with that, still people try to find some sense of humor, some ability to smile even in the ugliness of what the world has. <laughs> so we ask the question, what's there to celebrate? There are many celebrations around the world, and we're going to look at some of them for a brief moment. From Boryong Mud Festival in South Korea, where people go, draws millions of people from all over the world, started in 1990. Tourists come, truckloads of mud is laid out, people splash and get splashed with mud. There's mud skiing, there's mud wrestling, mud slides, even body painting with specially colored mud. And if you wish, you can pay for a rejuvenating mud massage. If you want to go, look it up. You'll find information on it. Then in Mexico, there's the Night of the Radishes. Should I say any more? Okay. But it is historic, sorry. People flock from all over to see this experience. It is a historic local culture. Radishes for the event were initially sourced from local farmers. However, the popularity makes it they have to go elsewhere to get their radish eye. Is that correct, radish eye? This can be nowhere else but Canada. There's a hair freezing contest in the Yukon. Okay, so you go up there, you dip your head in the hot springs, you get some form, you take a selfie and you send it in, and the winners are announced in March. 
if you want to go, let us know you're going so we can prepare to warm you up when you get back. <laughs> then in India, there's a Pita Kala War. A uh, uh, cow dung. I, I, I'm not going to say any more. You, you get the idea. It's a celebration. <laughs> then there's a monkey buffet festival in Thailand. All of these foods are brought out for the macaques that live in the area. They come in and enjoy this feast and fortune. And it is believed to be good luck because they are sharing with nature. <laughs> in England, there's the International Worm Charming Festival. To see if you can charm worms and get them to come to see you. <sighs> okay. It's a festival. Any idea where this festival takes place? Just north of us. The north of us. The U.S. <laughs> We're south. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> yes, the underwater music festival in the U.S. where divers, of course, as you can see, be as outlandish as possible. Uh, and it is an amazing experience. Now the child and all of us can enjoy this one. This is also in South Korea. A water gun festival. I wonder if it's just after the mud festival. <laughs> I'll clean them off some. But it's an experience everybody has to have. Thousands go. Now I thought this was very interesting because on March 17 it is St. Patrick's Day. You never would have thought this was St. Patrick's Day. You would have just thought these guys dressed up in green. But this is on the island of the Caribbean of Montserrat. And it is amazing how this came about. On March 17, 1768, the slaves tried to take over from those who were ruling them at the time and try to overthrow the governing power at that time, but it was squashed. But in memory of that, and to build up the local culture, as it were, they celebrate St. Patty's Day in Montserrat. Same date, but for 10 days. And it gets greener as they go along until they're done with the celebration of St. Patrick's Day. Just like St. Patrick's Day here, they get very drunk. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not what happens, right? Yeah, no, no. St. Patty's Day. To me, a very unique uh, celebration is this one. you love that. So that's how they do that before they baptize those babies. Uh, the devil is sent away so they're going to be perfect little children I guess. Call the devil jump and people come from miles and miles away to have their babies jumped over before they're baptized. Any idea what celebration this is? That's what you would think be Halloween. You would think. Yeah. Mardi Gras, maybe? Yeah, you would think. It sure looks like that. But let me tell you the history of this celebration and let's see if, what sense that makes. In the book of Esther, there's a very interesting experience that happened. As we know, the children of Israel were always fighting for their freedom always striving to find some way to, to follow God and trust God in spite of their experiences. But in the book of Esther, there is an experience with the king. King Xerxes had his fellows around, had his cohorts around, had his buds around, and he's trying to show off how big and bad he was. 
and his wife at the time was supposed to be the prettiest woman around, Queen Vashti. So he said, listen, go call the queen, tell her come dance for me and my friends. And she said, no, I am not going to do that for your drunken friends. So he got rid of her. So ladies, be careful. If your husband says, come dance for my friends, many. <laughs> so he got rid of her. And as he got rid of her, he had to find another queen. So he sent out these announcements to everybody in the land. If you'd like to become my queen, come to the, to the court, come to the castle, and prepare yourselves. So all of these young maidens came in hope to become the queen. One of these ladies was a Jewish lady by the name of Esther. There's a whole book in the Bible about her. So she came, Hadassah, she came and prepared herself. I love the fact how God does what he does when he does. Esther went there in hopes to become the queen. It so happens that the man in charge of preparing her, the eunuch in charge of preparing her for this, took a special liking to her. So he did special things for her, gave her special opportunities to get to that place. So it came time to bring the different maidens before the king. And the king fell head over heels with Esther. So there in Susa lived a man also whose name was Mordecai. Esther has become the queen. Mordecai, her cousin, he rose her, raised her, I should say. There were issues going on that Mordecai would be able to assist the king with. So she became queen, and here he is, Mordecai. He controlled the gate, so he did all the financial stuff that came in and out of the city. People really revered him for what he was. But there was another man in the city who really wanted to be it. His name was Haman. And Haman was very close to the king, loved by the king, and he just loved that respect that everybody showed him. But this one guy, Mordecai, wouldn't. So when the king would say, bow to Haman, he is my man, I love him, Mordecai says, I bow only to God. One time, Mordecai overheard the discussion of an attempt to kill the king. He told Esther, somebody's going to try and kill the king, warn the king, so he saved King Xerxes' life. It was written down in the Chronicles that he did that. And people forgot about it. But Haman was not happy. So Haman made a plot. Let's kill all of the Jews. Why? Because of one Jew. Because Haman wouldn't be bowed down to by Mordecai. Haman says, we got to kill all of them. All of them. So he sent out this decree, he got the king to sign a decree telling the king, listen, there are enemies who are out after you, we've got to kill them all. And the king was duped. <laughs> he didn't know that Esther was a Jew, but he signed the decree. So Mordecai started to fast. He started to mourn, he ripped his clothes, he got sackcloth and ashes, and Esther is trying to figure out, what's going on with, with Mordecai? Why is he going through this? And Mordecai sent a message to her saying, this is what has happened. Could it be that God has put you in this place for such a time as this? You've heard that statement over and over again. Esther was in the court of the king for such a time as this. A time when their people needed to be spared lives such a time as this. So Esther told Mordecai, go and get all the Jews in Susa together, hold a fast and pray for me. Don't eat or drink anything for three days and nights. My servant girls and I will be doing the same. After that, I will go to the king. Even though it is against the law, if I must die for doing it, I will die. At the time, you didn't just walk up to the king and say, hey king, how are you doing? It's good to see you. The king had to invite you. Even his wife, even his queen, couldn't just go to see him. If somebody went to see the king, 
and he reached out his scepter, they would be safe. But if he didn't, off with their head, right away. So Esther said, do this please. Go ahead and fast and pray. Prepare and ask God to bless me as I plan to do this. So, days are going by. Prayer time is going by. Then Esther has a plan. She invites the king to come to a feast. And she says, King, I would like you and Haman to come for a feast. I'd like you to come and enjoy a meal with me because I really appreciate what you do, King, and I appreciate Haman as well. So now Haman, thinking he's all that and a bag of chips, gets a little overheaded with himself, gets a little beyond himself. And he says, well, if I'm this good, let me, let me just kill Mordecai. Let me just get him dead. Let me build a nice gallows, 50 feet tall. Let me just build something to kill Mordecai. He's the only man that doesn't bow to me. So when Haman made this plot, his wife agreed wholeheartedly. But then the king says to Haman one day, you know, I wasn't able to sleep last night. And I was reading our chronicles of some of the things that have happened in the past. And tell me, Haman, what do you think I should do for someone who I want to honor? So Haman says, well, okay, I know who that is. That's me. So let me tell you, king, what I suggest. Have him ride one of your horses. Put on one of the best robes on him and have somebody walk through the city while he's on that horse. And Haman is so proud of himself knowing that's going to happen to him. <laughs> I love what God does. Then the king said to Haman, hurry and get those robes and the horse and go and put them on Mordecai. Go and put the robes on Mordecai, have him ride that horse and do everything that you have just suggested to me for him. Wow. Wow. I think Haman was a little, one, shocked, two, seething with envy and anger, I'm sure. And then the words have to be said that Haman said, see how the king rewards a man he wishes to honor as they're carrying him through the city, pulling him forward on that horse. Ah, he was so angry, so embarrassed, and his wife, man, you're beginning to lose power. Haman, you got to do something about it real fast. You're beginning to lose power. So remember, Esther had invited the king and Haman for a special meal. So we find that Mordecai is carried through the city, blessed. People love what he's doing, and Haman is not happy at all. So Esther has decided she's now going to go and see the king to express her feelings. She goes before the king, and the king reaches forth his scepter. And she invites Haman and the king for this special meal. So Haman again is very excited. Yeah, I get to eat with the king. His queen, his woman, has invited me to their home. I love it. And then the king says, what is it that you wanted from me? And Esther says, can you come back one more time? You and Haman, come back one more time for another meal. And Haman gets a bigger head still. But at that second meal, Esther says, King, somebody wants to kill me. What are you saying? Somebody's trying to kill me and all of my people. I am a Jew, King. And someone has put out this decree that all Jews should be killed because somebody told you, King, that they are your enemies. But we're not. We're not. So the king got very angry to think that someone would want to do this. And who is it? And she says, Haman is the one who wants to kill me and my people. The king got angry and left the room for a moment. And Haman pleads now for his life. But it doesn't look like he's pleading for his wife. So the king comes back and says, what's this? You're going to rape my wife in my own castle? And he calls all 
of the soldiers to come and carry Haman away. And Haman now is hanged on the same gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. So Mordecai was remembered not only for saving the king, he was remembered for all the good he did. And Mordecai left the palace wearing royal robes of blue and white, a cloak of fine purple linen, and a magnificent gold crown. Then the streets of Susa rang with cheers and joyful shouts. For the Jews, there was joy and relief, happiness, and a sense of victory. In every city and province, wherever the king's proclamation was read, the Jews held a joyful holiday with feasting and happiness. In fact, many other people became Jews because they were afraid of them now. That's the story. For many years since, Mordecai had these events written down and sent letters to all the Jews near and far throughout the Persian Empire telling them to observe the 14th and 15th days of Adar, which is March by the way, Adar as holidays every year. These were the days on which the Jews had rid themselves of their enemies. This was a month that had been turned from a time of grief and despair into a time of joy and happiness. They were told to observe these days with feasts and parties, giving gifts of food to one another and to the poor. So the Jews followed Mordecai's instructions and the celebration became an annual custom. Shushan Purim, it is called. Celebrating being saved by God's grace from the craziness of Haman. That's what the celebration began as. That's what it has become today. Shushan Purim. And I wonder, we can look and say, well, what's wrong with that? Do we sometimes do the same thing with the things we celebrate? Do we sometimes profane the things that God has given us to celebrate? People are even afraid to say Christmas, so they call it Xmas. Instead of the cross, we talk about bunnies and eggs. Do we profane? So again, here I go with lists. Pray for me. I'm not OCD, but I somehow like lists. Seven things to celebrate. Of course, there's the birth of Christ. We should remember that. The death of Christ. We should remember that. But here goes the list. Seven things to celebrate. One, I pray that we celebrate creation. Because it reminds us of whose we are. It reminds us from where we have come. I am, bless you, I am not from some scum in the water. Maybe sometimes in my life I may have acted like scum. Okay, we'll leave it at that. But that's not where I came from. God created us in his image. Two, God has given us a Sabbath rest. A day where he says, take a break from all your craziness. Even science and those who know what's going on say, everybody should take a break at least one day a week. Crucifixion and the cross. And so, oh, I forgot to read. And so the whole universe was completed by the seventh day. God finished what he had been doing and stopped working. He blessed the seventh day and set it apart as a special day because by that day he had completed his creation and stopped working. And that is how the universe was created. Remember that I, the Lord, have given you a day of rest. And that is why on the sixth day I will always give you enough food for two days. Everyone is to stay where he is on the seventh day and not leave his home. Crucifixion and the cross. For the message about Christ's death on the cross is nonsense to those who are being lost. But for us who are being saved, it is God's power. Christ himself carried our sins in his body to the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. It is by his wounds that we have been healed. Resurrection. Now since our message is that Christ has been raised from death, 
how can some of you say that the dead will not be raised to life? If that is true, it means that Christ was not raised. But if Christ has not been raised from, the death, from death, then we have nothing to preach and you have nothing to believe. More than that, we are shown to be lying about God because we said that he raised Christ from death. But if it is true that the dead are not raised to life, then he did not raise Christ. For if the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is a delusion and you are still lost in your sins. It would also mean that the believers in Christ who have died are lost. If our hope in Christ is good for this life only and no more, then we deserve more pity than anyone else in all the world. But the truth is that Christ has been raised from death and as the guarantee that those who sleep in death will also be raised. Salvation. Salvation is to be found through him alone in all the world, there's no one else whom God has given who can save us. And you remember that ever since you were a child, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are also able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Peace. You, Lord, give perfect peace to those who keep your purpose firm and put their trust in you. I have told you that this so that you will have peace by being united with me. The world will make you suffer, but be brave, I have defeated the world. Second coming. Do not be worried and upset, Jesus told them. Believe in God and believe also in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house and I'm going to prepare a place for you. I would not tell you this if it were not so. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself so that you will be where I am. I want you to remember the words that were spoken long ago by the holy prophets and the command from the Lord and Savior which was given you by your apostles. First of all, you must understand that in the last days, some people will appear whose lives are controlled by their own lusts. They will make fun of you and will ask, he promised to come, didn't he? And will ask, didn't he? Where is he? Our ancestors have already died, but everything is still the same as it was since the creation of the world. They purposefully ignore the fact that long ago, God gave a command, and the heavens and the earth were created. The earth was found out of, formed out of water and by water, and was also by water, the water of the flood, that the old world was destroyed. But the heavens and the earth that now exist are being preserved by the same command of God in order to be destroyed by fire. They are being kept for the day when godless people will be judged and destroyed. But do not forget one thing, my dear friends. There is no difference in the Lord's sight between one day and a thousand years. To him the two are the same. The Lord is not slow to do what he has promised, as some think. Instead, he is patient with you because he does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants all to turn away from their sins. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. On that day the heavens will disappear with a shrill noise. The heavenly bodies will burn up and be destroyed, and the earth with everything in it will vanish. Since all these things will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people should you be? Your lives should be holy and dedicated to God. But we wait for what God has promised, new heavens and a new earth where righteousness will be at home. And so, my friends, as you wait for that day, do your best to be pure and faultless in God's sight and to be at peace with him. Look on our Lord's patience as the opportunity he is giving you to be saved. What can we celebrate? Seven things I've shared with you that we can celebrate. Because that's what God hopes for us. That's the joy he wants to give us. And the peace that only he can afford for us. Let us pray. Father, we celebrate you today. We celebrate your son, Jesus, today. We celebrate the Holy Spirit today. For in this, Father, we have been created our world has been created. We have lived our lives 
We have found you. We have learned of you. We have given our lives to you. Now we have a hope, a hope of the soon return of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray, Father, that you will help us to trust you, to trust your word, and keep connected to you no matter what this world will throw at us. We pray, Father, that you'll bless this congregation, that they will continue to grow and seek after you, that your word will continue to be what touches their lives and their hearts. We pray, Father, that you'll be with our nation, that you'll bless its leaders, that you will help us to know what's right to do in spite of what man may say. So may we stand on your word and what is true from your word. Father, we especially want to remember today Ralph Sanstedt, Molly Cazola, Gail Grandin, John Pacuda, Margita Lang as she continues to recoup, Stan Mikoda, Eleonora Subhani, Edith Tyson, and Patrick Malosh and their loved ones. We pray, Father, that you will bless us to understand, and when we don't understand, give us your grace to accept your will and to trust your will. Father, we thank you for who you are, and we pray that you will help us to continue to give our lives to you each moment of each day. We pray for our other shut-in members, those who may not be on our list of prayer. We remember them, and we ask that you will bless them with your presence and give us opportunities to encourage and uplift them. We pray all these things in the most precious and holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. O oh, Jesus, I have promised, is the song we shall sing, to serve him till the end. We invite you to stand. The words will be on the screen.
So as you leave this place today, remember to celebrate the goodness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, celebrate his death and his resurrection, and prepare others to know of his goodness. So may he give you what you desire and make all your plans succeed. Then we will shout for joy over your victory and celebrate your triumph by praising our God. May the Lord answer all your requests. This is my prayer. Amen. have your picture taken today is the last day we're going to do that for the directory but if you have one from the former directory we can use that or one you want to hand in but we will take pictures downstairs if you would like some taken sorry go ahead